When visiting a destination, accommodation plays a big part. And where else but the spotted grunter? With confidence, we can recommend this resort, which Vernon has really upgraded over the last five years. Especially when you visit a new destination, one of your concerns would be where you stay. This lovely resort is on the banks of the Port St. John's River, close to the shops, and more importantly, conveniently positioned to get to every fishing destination with ease. Spotted Grunter caters after your every need. Having a little tackle and convenience store on site. A bar and restaurant, but to name a few. We arrived late afternoon and the guys couldn't wait to get a bait in the river. Who wouldn't? Very few things beat waking up like this. When visiting these areas, it's recommended that you make use of the local fishing guides. Spotted Grunter will be able to give you some names and numbers to contact. Our first morning out, we decided to start on the beaches, an area called Egateras. Early season, some of the cob will start on the beaches, moving towards the estuary. First morning at Port St. John's, we, <laughs> we got delayed because of the live bait story. Uh, anyone who knows Port St. John's live bait is essential. And I'm sad to say a whole three day, four day mission was unsuccessful with the live bait. Everything died by the time we got here. Uh, the jets in the tank got uh, blocked, we didn't know. A 25 quarantine. So now it's plan B, we came to the surface, a lot of brown water after the rains. So we came to Agate Terrace. Uh, there's a nice gutter here, the water's still, it's not as badly colored as that side. There has been fish at first rocks, some cob. Um, so we got our dead carrows, we brought some choco, octi, everything from Adgen Marine. And we're gonna do the good old fashioned rock and surf style. I'm gonna slide some of those carrows out whole. That's why I rigged up the slide rod and put it in the back of the gutter as the tide will be turning uh, just off to nine. We'll start pushing and we'll put some shorter choco baits and see if we can lure in one of those cobbies that uh, roams this area this time of the year. They just started in the last two weeks, I think. Two or three weeks, freedom. The cobs yeah, been here yeah. two or three weeks. Yeah. So it's just way the beginning. And like they told me now, Freedom told me that uh, Matthew said that the big cob only really starts from June, July. So they're currently getting that four to 10 kilo jobbies. So that's what we're here for. We'll give it a good shot uh, without live bait. And then maybe we can do a mission and see if we can find live bait. But it's a very tough area to find live bait. Uh, only when you go to Punskop or Ngazan. Yeah, Ngazan. So, beautiful, nice weather this week. Um, after Tevin and uh, Kumaran snoring last night, I think it might be a hard day, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right, just rigged up a small carrier, put an 8 j hook in the back, and a circle hook 6 in the front. I'm going to give that a shot on a non-return, get into the back. I 
One of the best things targeting edible fish is reasoning out where they would be feeding. As I mentioned, the tide will be turning, so it will be pushing. And a good place to start is on the inside of a bank, where there's a nice deep gutter on the inside as well. There's still definitely space for sliding, as it would have not been possible to cast a whole carrow to that exact spot. But with sliding, it makes it much easier. Alright, morning guys. Uh, we're down here at Potts and Johns, like Andre said. We had a, had a beach, we're fishing on the beach today. The water got a bit of uh, drift in it. So what I'm actually doing is I'm playing a 6 ounce cone, trying to pop. I got a 6-0 mustard circle here, and a small dangle. I'm going to be digging up a, a chaka bait here. Yeah? These are lovely fresh chaka we got from Adcan. So I'm just going to skin the chaka quickly. Alright, then you'll split the chaka in half. Once you got your chaka open up, just wash it a bit. Perfect. As you can see, nice white meat. You're gonna trim the edges off on the top. We don't actually need that piece. I'm gonna beat that up. I'm gonna cut two feelers now. So I'm gonna go two long strips. That's one. And there's another one. From here, I'm gonna split these two parts that I cut. Down the center coming down, fading four tentacles. Okay, so right there. Okay, so that's one done. Okay, take a mallet. Gently gonna beat the top top section of the two tentacles that you uh, cut. Not a lot, just to hold, just to get a bit of, uh, how can I say, grip onto your dangle. Do the same with the other one. Take your first tentacle, place that through the hook, and you start cutting that up. Try your best when you're making your baits not to cover the circle at all. You want that circle to be proud. That's what ensures you're getting a better look up. Take the second one. A couple half inches. Okay, now you got this lovely base. Now you're gonna take that piece that you cut and you're gonna beat this quite a bit. Okay, then this piece, what I actually do is I wrap around the bait that I actually put on now, around my base. So first thing you do, small piece on the hook, just to hold. You start wrapping. Okay, take a pot. Okay, pull that off. That's a chocolate bait there, but I'm gonna actually trim the section where my sinker needs to clip on. Take a button again and just secure the chocolate back on. And that's your bait guys. Okay, I'll be trying to cop. Nice small bait. That first hour took some patience as we waited for the tide to turn. Alright guys, not a far throw. We're throwing just before the back bank. There's a nice deep drain that's here. So you're putting the baits in the drain. Water has a lovely colour. So we hope we can go tight now soon. Quite excited for the strip, we've got it short notice. But yeah, we're going to be trying different spots as well. Like I said, today we're on the beach. Maybe a bit later on we're going to go to Punskop. I'm itching to get a, a cob and a raggy. So I said I'll start for a cob first. And then uh, try for a raggy a bit later. Alright guys, I went for a chocker body. Uh, but I beat it soft, nice pulp. And then just the fillets of a carrow. I put on the outside. So we're going to try a bit of a fleshy bait with the dirty water. Chaka is always a winner, but Kamaran's got that out, so we're testing that one. And then uh, we've got a whole carrow on that one. And then uh, more of a fleshy, smelly bait. This side. Yeah, it's a bit strong. The water is very, very, well, the sea is big, so the water is very strong running through this gutter. It's not ideal. The cop doesn't really like that. So we're gonna, because they left all the food at home. So we're gonna pick that up quickly and then drive around to First Rock, which is that big hill in the back you see there. Lighthouse is on the left, 
and from the white towers is about halfway in the first rocks we're gonna see there's a bit of cleaner water pushing in there and uh, that can maybe produce a bite even though we don't have uh, live bait we can throw a paddle tail or two if the water is not too too dirty so let's give that a shot After quickly picking up our food, it is a really quick drive from Spotted Grunter to First Rocks. Now this area must be probably one of the most popular areas in Port St. John's when targeting Cobb and Garrick. And a special request goes out to everybody that fish this area to be considerate and respect the fish and only ever keep what you need. Okay, we've moved to First Rocks now. Tide's pushing, we're about say two hours into the push we're just gonna fish this area for a while and see if we can get a cobby to take a bait or maybe a garrick uh, put a dead bait out a quarantine and then we're gonna fish the paddle tail when fishing a paddle tail for cob and garrick you use two different actions in this case I was using a one and a half ounce jig head fitted with a 6-0 hook and a 7-inch paddle tail. For the cob you can just reel it slowly on the bottom and for the gary you can let it drop to the bottom, jerk it up and let it drop down again with quite a fast action. This could also work for the cob. One of the other bait anglers on the rock was rewarded with a good fish which creates a bit of hope because up to now there wasn't a single bite. This gentleman mentioned that this was his bucket list fish as he has never caught one. Uh, the one Gary on sardine and uh, I did one pickup on a paddle tail which was awesome but the hook didn't set also Gary but no cob uh, we didn't see anyone getting a cob and we didn't have live bait so you won't know for sure but we threw paddle tail 150 gazillion costs and uh, no, no luck on that but that's fishing and that's Port St. John's. It's looking lovely though. Apparently a lot of chases around the corner here by Lighthouse. Garrick chases. So the Garrick has arrived at Port St. John's. And then the two that, uh, well, the, the hit I got. And then the guy caught that one. And yesterday morning they got one there in the surf off the boat. Also on a, on a dead sardine, by the way. And they're those six, five, six kilo jobs. But yeah, we know the Garrick's here, so come here and put in the effort on the push. Come a bit earlier than what we were today. Because the tide's kind of trapping us here. We've got this little spot to get through. And uh, we'll see. Maybe we do another session this afternoon into the night. Or maybe we go put, because it's almost about two hours before high. So in front of um, Spotted Grunter, put maybe a bait there and see. Who knows? Cob. The cob hole is to the left out from Spotted Grunter, the famous cob hole where the guys catch the cob in the history. You can pull your flat, eh? <laughs> How's it guys? 
Alright, we're having a bit of fun here now. We're back at the resort, spotted the hunter. Yeah, the two Gary came out, actually one Gary came out and Andre dropped one on the paddle tail earlier. It went a bit quiet, so we're now near about the river and we're trying to get some small cob, grunter, whatever's biting. Tevin got a nice one now. I got a smallish one a bit earlier, but we're gonna keep trying. Hope we can get something decent. So yeah, we're just having fun, relaxing, spending the evening here. So hopefully we can show you guys something, something a bit later. Maybe a, a better cob or a better grunter. Cheers. Doors open, doors close in my heart again. On the second morning, we decided to make our way to Punskop as Kamaran really wanted to get some raggy action. Now as you may see in the footage, these roads have really been improved all the way up to the Punskop village and the last two or so kilometers is still the traditional road we used to. Now, good morning guys, uh, what a lovely road, what a lovely destination. If you haven't been to Port St. John's, you don't know what you're missing absolute absolute picturesque and uh, we accommodated in the lovely spotted grunter resort which is probably in my opinion one of the top-notch places in uh, in uh, Port St. John's right now and uh, well done to Vernon and them that over the last five years they've taken that place and made it really a prime resort and uh, got the river at your doorstep and now today we drove to Punskop, it's about 9 k's. They fixed it all, they actually tarred a big part of the road, easier to get here. The last 3-4 k's is still normal, 4x4 required. But look at this guys, what a privilege to witness the creation like this. Now we arrived here and that's fishing. Uh, the sea is on its head, it's huge. Uh, so I don't know if we'll be able to, per, to keep nice big baits. We can try and keep some big baits off the front for, for sharks. Even here to the left where we normally fish for edibles is a mess. But we're here and we're going to give it a good shot, at least for the morning. If we can't come right in the first two hours and uh, it's not ideal, then we'll probably have to move. And that's Trans Sky, you have to move around and look for spots, look at where you can get the fish. But really guys, this place is magical. We decided to start scratching on the left hand side first as we'll be able to maybe hold a sinker. And over the years I got used to the bigger carry coming through in the bigger seas. So I was quite adamant to get some live bait and get that out. Off the front of Punskop, the ground swell was just too big. Okay, first bait out. Most important, get a bait on the water. So I've just put it, there's a nice gutter here, which we normally scratch in. And your cob moves in and out as well because that's where your bait fish is just logic reasoning. Um, in the trans you get them a lot in these gutters, these smaller cob. A uh, big cob will also swim here. The tide's low already, it's pulling back. We're about whew, three and a half, four hours after high. So it's sucking back. And that point there now, a lot of fish will come and feed. Your cob will come and feed on the, on the banks here. And then as the tide moves back, they move back with next to the rocks here and check the valleys and they go out, oh, just logic. Some of them, that rock there, there's an island in the, in the back there. The nice fish for cop behind it because they ambush fish from there. Um, all these points and gutters they'll ambush fish from, they'll sit behind it and tide pulling back, they wait for fish that comes around and they hit them. So what I've done, I've just put it at the point of that, uh, that one section of rocks coming out, just before this gutter. And I've put it there, hopefully in its path. Um, that if one comes comes past, we get a bite there. Now, Octileg doesn't get bites, you know, a lot of bites. But it lies for long, the peckers don't get it off, so you've got a better chance of getting a bigger fish. And a cob loves it. So, 
enough reasons for me. Even though this sea is uh, rough, I actually like it. If we had some live bait now, um, I don't think the bigger Gary Car here yet, only the smaller ones, but if we had enough, we had some live bait, which we'll fish for now. A uh, good chance for some nice big Garrick in this rough seas in Transcar. Alright well, guys, as you saw, I threw that sinker very close. So uh, I'm for a deep shot here. I'm fishing amongst uh, the reefs here, close reefs. Trying for bronze, trying for cop. The sea is quite big, so we can't fish for the regulator way, like I mentioned. But we definitely are going to try for a regulator. So we're hoping to get a nice pull here amongst these reefs. Anything will pick this bait up, so hoping to go on fast soon. It's going to stay next to Komoro and catch a fish. <laughs> Setting it out, it's going down to low, spring low. Still got an hour. Come uh, put a big bait out in front, but a sea is too big, didn't last long. So we'll see, maybe with the pushing tide, your sea will settle a bit to be able to get see the dirty water runs about what, 400 meters. It's ideal for a reggae as well, there. And uh, this all came down the river at Port St. John's and it's washed up here. So the water looks nice for cob. We've had one or two nice interests uh, from a cobby, but uh, small cobbies, so no proper pickup. But we're still persisting with that. I've got a little octi leg, but I'm using, uh, I'm using a much smaller hook now to see because I had a 6 o circle, which I think was just too big for him to, to commit with the half octopus. I was looking for a bigger cob. So, uh, Gone for a smaller hook now, and we'll see if that does the trick. But it's been quiet. It's worse than what I expected. I thought, yeah, we'll at least pick up. You can see behind me, it looks nice. And there to the right, we fish behind that bank and we fish across here. But how it goes is you can't get a bite unless you've got a bait in the water, right? So we'll just enjoy the scenery while we wait for a bite. After a good 4-5 hours putting out different bait, we decided to move to another spot. Driving on the way back, we agreed that none of us has really fished Big Tree, famous for Grunter, and we thought it would be at least a good idea to have a couple of cars. See if the grunter will fall for that. Grunter belly, ah, uh, sardine belly. And this is the spot they call a big tree. It's just on the way back. We thought we'll have, at least have one cast, yeah. One or two casts and see. Okay, 
my target species, <laughs> but a bit small. If I remember correctly, they're 40 centimeters, minimum size limit. Lovely fighters. But now we want a bigger one. Now just before high tide, it turned into a bit of a small cob smash. We ran out of sardine and started having fun with the prawns and almost every cast was a bite. Hi guys, having some nice fun here in the river. Fishing for the grunter but the cob came on the bite. Small cob, very small. Uh, this was actually my live bait today, so I had live here out. So I decided to put uh, prawn as bait. And uh, the cob started to bite. It's a nice small cob. Get the hooks out, release it back. Now all in all, our first two days has not been as productive as what we want. With the sea being on its head and a massive groundswell, it affects everything. In hindsight, we should have gone back to the estuary. And that was the plan for the next day. But it's nice to see that how healthy the river is. Yeah. Unfortunately, we only had three days in Port St. John's and wanted to try as many spots possible. So the first two days were running around and with massive ground swells made fishing a bit difficult. But it was safe to say that the next day we should go back to the estuary where the water was most fishable and a few fish were caught already. So catch us in the next show where we spend our last day at Lighthouse and First Rock, Port St. John's. Thank you for everybody for subscribing to our channel and if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification button to receive updates every time we upload a video. Also please like this video as that helps us a lot.